stand for Pledge of Allegiance first? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. During the course of the evening, I need to stay within two inches of this thing. So if I'm back here and you can't hear me, you know, let me let me know. <coughs> to either of the constables of the town of Brookfield in the county of Worcester. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town, qualified to vote in town affairs, to meet at the Brookfield Elementary School, 37 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass, on Friday, the 9th day of November, in the year 2018, at 6.30 p.m., then and there to act on the following articles. And you are directed to serve this warrant by posting up attested copies thereof at the town hall and post office in said town, 14 days at least before the time of meeting of holding of said meeting. Hereof fail not and make the due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk at the time and place of the meeting as aforesaid, given under our hands this 23rd day of October in the year 2018. Linda Lincoln, Clarence Snyder, Beth Coughlin, Selectman, pursuant to the within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Brookfield by posting attested copies of the same at the United States Post Office on October 24, 2018, and the Brookfield Town Hall on the same day. 14 days before the date of meeting as within directed, Richard A. LaPierre, Constable of Brookfield. Do we have um, any people in the uh, audience that are not um, registered to vote? Okay. All right, we're all set then. Um, as we proceed, a couple of things. Um, one, um, if someone, sometimes things get lengthy and someone will want to end debate and they'll say, move the question. Um, when someone does that, that's, that is no, that's not debated. Um, we take a vote on it. And if the vote is two-thirds, then we stop talking about whatever the article is and we'll proceed to take a vote. The person making that motion will, will just make that motion only. It's not at the end of a long um, statement. Um, it's a single motion and we'll handle it that way. Um, and just a reminder that all remarks need to be limited to the topic that's under discussion. and. Um, it's improper to indulge in references to personalities and um, no, no clapping and booing or anything else like that. The first time you speak tonight, the first time, would you please give your, your name so that we know who, who you are. Other than that, um, Mrs. Lincoln, you had something you wanted to mention before we got started? Yes, I would like to make all of uh, the voters here tonight uh, that this is the 300th anniversary of the first town meeting, which was held on December 18th, 1718. Oh. Mr. Snyder, do you have anything? We're making history. Yeah. All right, Article 1. To see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 10, Section 16, of the town general bylaws that make the following wording changes noted in bold such that the revised bylaw would be read as follows. And I'll dispense with the reading of it and wait for a motion. Mr. Moderator. Mrs. Lincoln. I would like to uh, move that the town vote to pass over this article number one. Motion made and seconded to pass over the article. Um, 
Would you like to say something about why you want it to pass over? The, the reason we are passing over it, because we already have um, a policy on driveway permits. Okay. So a motion, a motion to pass over, we, we will, the only thing we're talking about now is whether to pass over this article. We're not going to talk about the merits of the article. That's for a separate discussion, if, if depending on what you decide to do. Mr. Cook. Um, yeah, I would ask that we defeat this motion. Uh, I really don't think it's appropriate for someone, <laughs> the selectman, to really move the pass over this article since it was sponsored by the bylaw committee. And the bylaw committee has not been given the opportunity, since it's not germane to this motion, uh, to speak on its behalf. So I would urge you all to vote this down so we can have a discussion on the merits. All right, anyone else want to comment on whether we pass over the article or not? Oh. As everybody knows who I am, Herb Chase, the highway superintendent. This is not anything that I brought up. It was the bylaw committee, which, like Linda just said, we already have something on the books that's been approved by the attorney generals and town council. So. I don't know why we're trying to do good things and so on and so forth. Mr. Cook? Um, to put a little historical perspective, there was no policy on this until the bylaw committee raised this issue. And the policy that's been adopted is uh, not codified, meaning if you adopt a bylaw, in order to change it, you'd have to come to town meeting. So I think it's important that we codify this. Uh, could I? This was a, a bylaw, right, that's approved? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, we did have a bylaw on the books that was passed in 2008. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they can hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you would repeat what I said. Hi, we have a bylaw on the books that was passed in 2008. Isn't that correct, Herb? Yes. Okay. Just one other comment before I... Yeah. And as noted, the bylaw that's passed does not include the text in the bold. So keep that in mind. The bylaw, um, section 16, except for the changes here, um, was approved by the Attorney General on December 17, 2014. All right, anybody? Yep. I just had a quick. Would you identify yourself? My name is Steve Gillis with the advisory committee. And um, can, can you. I'm trying to speak louder. Steve Gillis with the advisory committee. Much better. Um, it, 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 is the dollar amount on what you have in front of you different than here? You know, in other words, uh, I'm just trying to. And maybe this is not the time to debate this, but. Excuse me? Right, right, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put the mic down. All right, any other discussion on whether or not to pass over this article? Okay. All those in favor of passing over the article, would you please say aye? Aye. All those opposed, no. No, no. The article is passed over. Uh, oh, yeah, let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah. Musical microphones this evening. <clears throat> Ms. Blower, uh, Just a second here. I have, to, I, have to, I have to put that paperwork out of the way and get to the next one. Okay, Article 2. To see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification, to include the position of transfer station manager at grade nine, 340 points, or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to approve uh, a general general bylaw uh, per Article 2 as written in the town warrant, except for the phrase to take any action relative thereto be omitted. 
Thanks, Linda. Okay. Would you like to speak to it first? Uh, Transfer. Yeah. Well, 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 I I can um, speak to it because I'm on the personnel board. We had um, we had this come before us, so we went forward and we went over. Um, we did the job rating with the spe specifications on this to add it. And if anybody was interested, because this is a new position, and um, the salary range is from thirteen dollars and seventy five cents to sixteen dollars and forty five cents. So it's just a new position that they're adding down there at this transfer station. Mr. Pottery, if I add one thing, is that that wouldn't be a change in total headcount, it's the change in grade of a position that's already allocated. Anyone else? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. That one's unanimous. Okay, Article 3. Mr. Moderator. I'm sorry. To see if, give me, wait for me. I'm going as fast as I can. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer or borrow a sum of money to pay Copeman and Page Law Firm Copeland and Page Law Bill from FY18 or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $1,816.49 to pay a KP law bill from fiscal year 18. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Do you want to say anything about it or? Um, pretty much the article pretty says it all. It was okay. a it was a bill that that got delayed in processing and that we just need to to make right in essence from the prior year. All right. Any other questions or discussion on this one? This is a prior year's bill, so it takes a nine tenths vote. So let's see how we do. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. That Article 4. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer or borrow a sum of money to pay a Telegram and Gazette bill from FY18 or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $418.24 to pay a T&G bill from FY18. And this is the same thing as the other one. It was just a bill that wasn't paid in FY18. Okay. Was there a second on that? Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments from anyone? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. That one's unanimous. Article 5. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer, or borrow a sum of money to increase the police chief's salary by $6,000 per year, or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $6,000 to increase the police chief's annual FY19 salary to $78,189 with the intent being that the police chief's annual salary in the future fiscal years will be based upon an increased amount unless otherwise adjusted and subject to appropriation. Okay, motion made and seconded. Do you want to Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. Mr. Moderator, through you, uh, our police chief, uh, we did a, a, a somewhat informal survey, but we went out to eight different communities to take a look at what the standard kind of usual and customary, let's call it gap between the highest ranking person that's subordinate to the chief and the chief's salary is across communities uh, within kind of the same budgetary size uh, as the town of Brookfield. And what we found was that the average, let's call it gap between a sergeant and the chief or a lieutenant and the chief is between 16 and 25 percent. 
currently the chief is only 6% above what the sergeant's base pay is. Uh, so in the interest of, of both retention and fairness, uh, we, we, as the, we as the Board of Selectmen are the ones who are proposing this. This is not something that the Chief came to us demanding. And one of the reasons why he's not here tonight is he wants everyone to feel they can speak freely on the topic. But this is really a matter of fairness uh, and letting people know that um, we actually value the folks that work for us the same way other communities do. All right, any comment or questions or discussion on this one? Okay, folks, so I have a few uh, issues with this. The first one is, as I understand it, the Chief's under contract right now, and um, I think the right time to negotiate this is when the Chief's contract expires and we commit to the contract. The second thing is about fairness. Earlier this year in June, we approved some increases in some salaries and the promise was that some employees would see this increase after we got word back from the Collins Center. And this is an outfit that's been uh, working with the personnel board and the selectmen that's been reviewing salaries. And so we've been told that after the, the Collins Center comes back with their determination, then we would start looking at these salaries and see an increase. So to be fair, I think the selectmen should be consistent with what they said earlier and let that apply to everyone, regardless of the circumstances that they have just uh, discovered. So I'm going to urge you to vote with me tonight to pass over this article. Good evening, John Holcraft, Dave Holcraft. Um, this is a fall meeting here. We're supposed to be doing housekeeping, not increasing uh, wages at this meeting. Uh, second of all, we did all this budget increases and so on and so forth uh, back in May. Um, Beth just made a point out, we could have to keep a gap between the sergeant and the police chief. Well, I had this discussion with these guys a year and a half ago when I was on the chair, um, advisory board. The sergeant does details and overtime. So if next year he says, oh, I'm going to work more details and more overtime, we're not going to have a gap again. We're going to come back here again and say, oh, we're going to raise the, the police chief's salary again? This has nothing to do with the police chief. This is financial management of our town here. It's very poor. Um, and also a contract was signed and when you have a contract, you should stick to it. If there's going to be a change in the contract, then you wait till a new contract comes in. And you don't do it at a fall meeting when there's nobody here. I mean, this is just not good management of our finances in this town. Uh, one other thing, if I was a town employee in this town, which is a, working for the town is excellent in this town, I would be demanding a raise for myself as well. Because, that's my reason, because. So I think we should pass this over and wait to the May meeting or wait till his um, contract is up. And also for number six too, that employee too. Um, this is all tied together. Should be done at an annual town meeting. Thank you. Mr. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you, uh, oh, Mr. Moderator, I was just gonna, as a point of order, uh, note that I very, was very specific in my language and that this is based off of base salary, so police details, overtime, and so on and so forth, as people like to use the phrase, uh, don't apply in this case. This is against pure base salary. Uh, the other issue is that we're bringing this to town meeting rather than ne renegotiating the contract behind closed doors to determine what in good faith we can discuss that too. Thank you. We had, her, we had got in touch with the Collins Center on this position for the police chief and she did give us communities around us that are about the same size as Brookfield for salary, so it was checked. All right. I'm 
So again, I just want to reiterate that's an issue of fairness. With that being said, I move that we pass over this article. I'll second. Motion is made and seconded to pass over the article. Um, There's already a motion to, on the pay rate. Right. Yeah, What's that? We have already motion with the made motion. on the pay rate. Yeah. You're right, right but he's he's right. making he's making a motion to pass over it. But our motion was to pass it. Right, but he's he's trying to make a motion to pass over the article. So if we don't want to pass over the article, we're going to vote no, and then we'll go back to discussing it. And if we want to pass over the article, then we're going to vote aye. So, Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yes. I, Kevin Urkula. I believe that uh, it is too late once you've begun discussion on a motion, speaking about the, uh, the article, to then make a motion and act on it to pass over the article, since we've already not passed over it. Um, and, and th it actually contradicts what I said at the beginning. I didn't want people making a statement and then saying they were going to pass over the article. I mean, it, it, the accepted standard procedure for town meetings is when someone wants to pass over an article, they walk up there and they say, I move that we pass over the article. No introductory flower remarks before that. That's the moderator's call. I let this one go because we'll see how it votes, but that's, you know, we, we, yeah. All right. All those that are in favor of passing over the article, would you please say aye. Aye. All those who were opposed to passing over the article, would you please say aye. No. No. Okay, the motion is defeated. The motion to pass over is defeated. We're right back where we were. Okay. Any other comments on the... I want to count. We'll I haven't even started yet. Passing over too late. Too late. Okay, fine. Let's have, no. I, I I moved on. It's done. We're we're going on. Okay, we're going to discuss this. Any anything else? All right. Now we're going to take a vote on the motion. The motion is six thousand dollar increase for the chief salary. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. 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 Okay. That motion also passes. Article 6. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer, or borrow a sum of money to increase the zoning enforcement officer's annual salary or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate. $3,608 to increase the Zoning Enforcement Officer's annual FY19 salary to $11,000, with the intent being that the Zoning Enforcement Officer's annual salary in future fiscal years will be based upon this increased amount unless otherwise adjusted and subject to appropriation. Second. Motion. Motion made and seconded. Any, any discussion from the board before I... No. Uh, in essence, we're, we're supporting this because of the fact that this particular position experienced a rollback uh, that is inappropriate with the current volume of work that that post is seeing within this town. And he, he has had a, I can, I can vouch for the salary also. He works at least 20 hours per week and he has been doing lots, uh, you know, he's a new officer and he's been doing a lot more work than the other one has. So I feel that he uh, deserves this uh, salary increase. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I want to, um, I'm Sharon Mahoney, Chair of the Planning Board. I want to support what our selectmen just said. Um, as someone who works 
on almost a weekly basis with the zoning enforcement officer, I can testify to not only his work skills, but um, the uh, communication skills that he has. In the past, we had problems getting a hold of the previous ZEO because he was a shared employee with other towns. Um, he didn't always get back to us in a timely manner, which I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to assign blame. It's just the way it was. Um, he has been superb in communication with our office, the planning board, when it came to issues that he was either uncertain about or wanted feedback on. And I think he sets an exemplary example. <laughs> that's redundant, but there it is. Um, for the way interdepartmental relationships and communication should be held and he did not have to be asked to do that he took this out on his own and i would like to endorse this salary increase all right any other comments or questions same thing again this should be done at the uh in may doing our budget season it should be not be doing now if he's doing all this work then it should have been uh, brought forward in the uh, budget season uh, don taft um if I look at this properly, that's about eleven dollars an hour. Is that about right? How does that compare to a typical clerk in town? About the same. No. Who wants to answer? Somebody want to answer that one? About two dollars on average less than the average clerk. Is she in Brooklyn? Should. Well, we'll get you an answer in a second. Some bookkeeping. Mr. Moderator, I move that the uh, that the uh, town treasurer be uh, and the town accountant be uh, given the uh, purview to speak at the town meeting. Okay. Motion made. Second. Okay. The reason for that is town bylaws require people who are not um, voters in Brookfield um, need permission from the group to speak. So all those in favor of letting the town accountant and the treasurer speak tonight, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no, they're voted. Okay, whoever was gonna try and answer the question, go ahead. I believe the next lowest clerk would be $13 an hour. Then I ask the question, why shouldn't this be at that level? This, yeah, but this was the recommendation. Yeah, and again, this was a recommendation by the zoning enforcement officer. All right, any other comments or questions? If not, all those in favor of the motion bringing the salary to $11,000 a year, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. Okay, motion passes. Article 7. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to purchase personnel safety equipment for the highway department or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move this town vote to raise and appropriate $2,700 to purchase personnel safety equipment for the highway department. Uh, this, this is due to an oversight in this account which was not funded at the annual town meeting. Okay. Selectman, want to add anything else before we take? Well, uh, also, uh, just recently we just did have an uh, OSHA audit, if I am correct, Herb, and that with that audit they identified a number of uh, deficiencies on the part of the highway department and things that we're, we're going to need to come to uh, come up to balance. So I, I would turn to Herb to suggest uh, any other thoughts that he might have. It's a, in the highway department, we had an audit done. Uh, OSHA. You need to come up here. Uh, they can hear me. I can't. <laughs> Turn the hearing aids on. It's up all. It's up all the way, and that's that's what you need to do. If I can't hear you, and I'm the one that runs the meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> we uh, the highway department had an audit done down there from uh, OSHA and stuff. There was some minor stuff that had to be taken care of and stuff, but they said for. A uh, highway department, it was one of the better highway departments that they've been in in a long time. The fines, if it was actually fines down there, it would have been up around thirty or $40,000. Okay. 
but it's a courtesy call that they did for us because we called them in before they, we had any issues. They don't find it. Right. All in. So we had some minor stuff. We're taking, trying to take care of it as much as we can, and this will help out. All right. Any other comments or questions? If not, all those in favor of the $2,700, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Okay, that's a vote. Article 8, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer borrow with some sum of money for additional tree removal or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $10,000 for additional tree work removal. Okay. Slepin, want to say something for a Yeah, briefly, up? that Herb, Herb and the Highway Department has did, been disposing of about 90 trees per year. We're now, the list is now over 200 trees that we need to uh, worry about. Um, further, if, just as a property owner who has uh, white oak on their property, uh, you, if you have white oak on your property, you see that the, those trees have been defoliated. And with that, we can expect more trees, unfortunately, to be removed. So I would highly recommend that we continue to fund or additionally fund the tree removal. And I'll step up here again so Donald can hear me good. And uh, I'm in contact with National Grid and everything else, trying to get them to give us a hand to take some of the trees down around their power lines. So uh, we're just working at one another's and trying to get stuff done. I haven't heard back from National Grid yet, so. All right, anyone else? Okay. All those in favor of the $10,000, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. <coughs> That's a vote. Article 9. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow the sum of money to purchase a generator for the highway garage or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $39,000 from stabilization account to purchase a generator for the highway garage. Motion made and seconded. Do you want to check? Okay. The, the primary reason behind the proposal of this purchase is that the highway garage uh, currently, while it has a generator, that generator is insufficient for powering the, the compressors um, as well as getting the doors up during uh, periods of time when we don't have power. Uh, and that's also our secondary emergency operations center uh, for during a period of time if we were to have some sort of community-wide emergency. Secondary to the police station, the highway barn is the kind of the, the alternate op center. Hi, Bill Simpson here. Um, I think having a second generator is an excellent idea. Um, but my question was, I just um, looking at the numbers here. So where where are we um, in terms of having money to spend, and and just in the where are our, what's our general budget picture as far as cash available for these warrant articles? Just okay, who wants to try and answer? His, cut this question. Well, I got two volunteers. Harry, grab the mic. Thanks. Currently, stabilization is at 727-825, so we do have availability there. And we are still uh, $275,000 plus or minus under the levy limit. So uh, my recommendation is to fund with stabilization. Mr. Gillis, did you want to say something or is that the care? Okay. Oh, here. No, he's... He, he encourages the funding source. All right, any other comments or questions? Taking money out of the stabilization account requires a two-thirds vote. Um, all, those, all those in favor of taking the money out of stabilization, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. All right, that's approved. Article. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear it. Okay. Well, we need a nine-tenths vote, so now we're going to stand up. So, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
right. uh, stand up and be counted, and my counter will go to it. Fifteen. Fifteen. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay. Just wait. My pencil is. Okay. All those opposed, please stand. All right. I made that count myself. Okay. The motion passes. If you motion to pass over, you have to tell why you're going to pass it over. And that's what we talk about. Pass it over. I don't want to. Get, I don't want to get off into other the merits of it. If you want to talk about the merits of it, then you got to make the motion to do it. All right. Um, let's see. Next one. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to repair water runoff at Rice Corner Road or take any other action relative thereto. Uh, Mr. Moderator, yes. I move that the town vote to pass over this article. And second, okay. And um, if I could give the reasons why, that is number. You certainly may. No, number 10, okay. The highway department provided us an estimate to remediate the water runoff at 118 Rice Connor Road. And I think the figure was, if I'm not wrong, Herb, it was 33,000. And then, an, and the other part of it is that the town has approached Mass Wildlife for compensation and has not yet to receive the decision because the water runoff is coming from the Mass Wildlife property and it runs under a culvert under the road. And just as late as today, Senator Gobi was to approach uh, uh, Secretary Beaton of, uh, because we did not receive feedback from the staff. She was going to, st uh, uh, Secretary Beaton of Energy, the, the head guy of uh, Energy and Environment, to uh, plead our case as far as the monies and funding for this article. Crystal Libra on 118 Rice Corner Road. Um, we have had this um, issue with water. We brought it to the town back in February, and we came to the, um, the meeting back in May, and we're still having this issue. Right now we have, with, especially with all the rain this summer and fall, we have a flowing river through the back of our, the middle of our backyard. It is not only affecting our property, but it's affecting both properties next door. Um, I brought my laptop tonight, and I have some videos and some photos. If anybody would like to see, I will leave it up with the select board. Um, but right now, the biggest concern is that it is severely eroding away the road, the town road, and it is eroding away the properties that are the taxpayers' properties. Um, right now, I, have, I also have pictures on my laptop, if anyone would like to see, but it is eroding the road, so that way, at some point, um, all the soil and everything that's underneath the road, the road is going to collapse in. So if nothing is done, then this is going to be a, it's going to cost a lot more money in the end than it would now to fix it. Uh, Fred Rogers, 120 Rice Corner Road. Um, I have seen this water come across, and I, I had asked to put a stop at the new property of the building at 116 Rice Corner Road, um, and that didn't happen. Uh, I guess he was already permitted and given the uh, proper, proper approval to go ahead and build this house. With that being said, with all the rain that's coming across even tonight, and if anybody wants to take a walk tonight and see a nice river in her backyard and through my backyard and down to one of the selectmen here goes into his yard on Gay Road. This is a very big issue. Um, the water does not only go under the road. There's so much water that it goes over the road. And the one point that I wanted to make was that 
in the winter time when we get all of our snow and everything freezes and we get a lot of snow up on that 40 acres plus and we get the warm spring rain which is melting that snow that water that's coming down off of there is unbelievable now, i've lived there for eight years and i don't know why anybody approved to build houses where these houses are built but this is a major problem and a couple of uh, the folks here have come to the back of my property and actually looked at where this water is going down onto gay road and we literally have a three foot gouged trench where this water is just carving its way through properties of this runoff water so this definitely needs to get taken care of and i realize that you're trying to see if the state's going to help support it or pay for it all in, in, a, in a total i guess what i'd like to know is did we have an engineer plan this take a real good look at this and say whatever you guys are proposing for thirty three thousand dollars is that really going to cover and divert this water successfully so that when you get that heavy snow and that warm spring rain and everything's coming down is it going to handle that much water so only an engineer would probably be able to put those things together to say what we're going to put in place will or will not i think i'd like to know what that plan is because i'm not an engineer but i really like to see what they have in mind you know what i mean as far as the, the size pipes that you're planning on using where you're diverting the water um, i think realistically you need to come right through all of our properties with a big pipe and run it down the great gay road through all of the properties and i know that that's a big task to do but i think that's the proper way to do it but again i'm not an engineer but i would like to know what the plan would be and the other thing is that you have he put up a silt fence, meaning the builder, at 116. Put up a silt fence and he put up his um, hay bales, but all of the silt that's coming off of that property right now is covering her backyard. Who takes care of that? I mean, I think the DEP or EPA or somebody should be putting a stop to this project, and I think it should be stopped until this thing is completely taken care of. And I don't know if that anything can be done about that, but I really would like to see a cease and assist until the problem gets fixed. Because her backyard is suffering big time. And nobody seems to care. I mean, or the, the builder doesn't seem to care. And who else is there to go to but everybody here in the town? So I'll rest with that. Thank you. OK, the motion, you, just a second. The motion before us is to pass over the article. So I want to say keep the focus on whether or not to pass it over or not. And if we don't pass it over, then we go to the merits of of the discussion. So any anybody else have anything to add on whether or not to pass it over or not pass it over? <coughs> Just on the merits of passing over, right? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of passing over the article, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed to passing over the article, please say no. No. Okay. The article is not passed over. So now we still we still we don't have a motion before us. Well, then the most the motion, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Moderator would be to, in fact, uh, uh, take our Article 10 and uh, as, as a motion to, uh, to fund the $33,000 estimated for the repair um, at this time. I'll second. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Go. All right. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, all right. I move that the, that the town will uh, transfer from stabilization $33,000 to repair the water runoff at Rice Corner Road to the uh, road reconstruction account. Can I raise a point of order to the moderator? There was a motion already made. Wait, 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 just, yep. just a second. I can submit that the, as an amendment. The, that would be an amendment. The, um, motion before you was that seconded yes second. i seconded it okay so we'll start with 
the motion, the first motion, and then if we want to amend it, we do that. So now, any discussion on this? Please restate the motion. What's that? Please restate the motion. Okay. I want your input of the mind. It has to be the original one, which is which was oh. to raise an appropriate. It was just no. to raise. I mean, I heard a, I heard the the simple motion that to raise an appropriate thirty three thousand dollars to take care of a drainage problem on Rice Corner Road water runoff, but it didn't mention one eighteen or anything like that. So I don't have that in any information I have. So it's pretty generic at this point. Okay. So then, so if that's a second, then we can then amend based on the generic. You can discuss the yeah. generic, you can make it, you can amend it, you can do whatever you please within so, the limits. So based on town council, I believe we can just move forward with the discussion. Okay. You, Mr. Moderator? Do I need to ask, excuse me, Mr. Moderator, do I need to be voted to speak? If he wasn't in the previous one. Make a motion that uh, town council can speak. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, go ahead. Uh, th uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, my name is Jeffrey Blake uh, from KP Law. I'm your town council. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Um, in my opinion, and this of course is up to Mr. Moderator, um, the motion could be amended. It, the, the main motion on the floor right now is to raise and appropriate 33000 but certainly a motion to amend to, to use stabilization as a as a funding source would be, would also be appropriate, and uh, that would be a two-thirds vote. Do you want to amend the stabilization? Right, Mr. Chafee? As a uh, person in the town of Brookfield and a taxpayer in the town of Brookfield, if we're going to vote this $33,000 to take care of a water issue on Rice Corner Road, you better plan on voting a lot more money than that because you're going to do my property first. The water's been running off in Lake Road onto my property for years. So either you take care of my property first or take care of the whole town, one or the other. Hi, Doug Ford. Uh, I have a question. Uh, if we do approve the 33000 and then the mass people decide that they're going to you know, help out with the funding. Would they? Would we still get the money from them? Whatever who they to, decide. Who well, wants to tackle tackle his answer? We, we've been tackling since the spring to see if we can get the uh, Department of Fisheries and Wildlife to pay the bill, mm -hmm. and we have been unsuccessful to boot to, yeah. to date. Now, if if we do this and spend the money, and then wildlife says yes we 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 do approve it would they give us the money that would be reimburse us if that's what you want to call that, us that would call be, it that would be the hope okay well to help these poor people out i i would recommend doing the 33 and then when that wildlife comes and hopefully they'll give us some money and then we can get some reimbursement back as everybody knows what month it is and so on and so forth here, the work's not gonna get done until springtime or so anyways. So it's minute, you might as well wait to the annual town meeting. I also wanted to point out too, just to remind everyone, it does affect three properties in town, so it's not just one person's, and it goes through the middle of our backyard. So unfortunately, half of our backyard, which is a very decent size, the reason why we bought our house, um, half of it is truly unusable because we cannot even, our, child can, our kids can't even play in the backyard. They have to wear their mud boots and they get stuck in this huge river going through our backyard. So again, my biggest point is it's affecting three taxpayers at this point, not just one. Question, Mr. Moderator. Does the scope of the problem uh, reach emergency proportions in the opinion of the highway uh, department or uh, anybody else to, to whom it might pertain? Anybody want to try and answer that question? I would say turn 
that would be a recommendation on emergency or not? To me, that's not an emergency. It does not affect the roadway. It doesn't ice up there. It ices up like anything else does during the winter time. Seeing how I live on the road and I go through it, the water does come over the road. Therefore, you we could have hydroplaning. People do fly around that road. I do believe it could be an emergency at some point in time. And uh, I just don't believe in waiting till the spring session to bring this up again, kicking the can down the road. I think this is something that needs to be approved so that we can have it on the slate and figure out how and when we're going to get it done. Al Jones, uh, Peter O'Connell is chair of the uh, Capital Improvement Committee. He could not be here. He asked me to uh, pass along uh, a quick overview of the, our discussion on this. Uh, Capital Improvement voted not to fund this repair because it could open the town to future responsibility in many, many areas in town. Discussion focused on town council determination that the town is not liable. Can, uh, there was something that came out that we were told about from town council. Is there is that anything you can speak to, sir? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, if I may. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess the, the, the question that you're asking me, is, is the town liable? And whether or not the town is liable for something that it does or it doesn't do is an extraordinarily f fact based analysis. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't have all of the information. Um, I do know, or at least I have been told, that this has been going on for the last 50 years. So uh, whether or not we are negligent in what we're doing, um, that would be remain to be seen. I can't sit here today and tell you that there's absolutely never a situation where you would, you would be liable, but at the same time, I can't tell you today that you are liable. Sharon, if I could real quick. The, the question was more, are we liable for water coming off somebody else's property? That was what I thought the determination. And, and in a generic question that you just asked, are we liable for somebody at water coming off somebody else's property? In most, in most instances, no. However, there could be extenuating circumstances where we do something or, or there's actions that we could have or should have taken that could put us uh, in a situation where we would be liable. So again, I, I don't really feel comfortable opining to the entire town on TV about whether or not you're, we're liable for this or for that without knowing you know, the, the, the minute details of what's going on here. Did something come from town council? Something came from town council, okay. yes. And, and I don't think that what came from town council said absolutely positively there's no liability whatsoever. Okay. All right. There, there, you know, it, again, and, and I hate to, to give you this lawyerly answer, but there's a lot of stuff that, that, that we don't know about and there's a lot of things that could happen or have happened that if something were to happen down the road, we would have to, to explore those through discovery to determine whether or not there, w there would be liability. So okay. it's not, a, it, you know, unfortunately, it's not a simple yes or no. Thank you. Well, she, Mrs. Mahoney was next. Then. Um, yes, this is just background information. Planning Board was asked about this by the Highway Department Administrative Assistant. Um, she wanted to know if there was any permitting process involved on behalf of the town. And I researched this and discovered that since the houses are all on frontage on a town road and not part of a subdivision, there was no permitting process involving the Planning Board or, I believe, the ZBA. It was entirely up to the building inspector and the builder themselves to, um, to arrange for the building of these properties. Um, as far as the road goes, that's highways wheelhouse. It has nothing to do with planning board or ZBA. And so um, as far as the involvement of the town goes, permitting wise, there was no involvement to my knowledge. And I did research this as best I could as a layman and not as a lawyer. Thank you. Mr. Snyder, you were next, and then... Yes, so in correspondence from town council, uh, and based on my uh, reaching out to Senator Gobi earlier, that in fact, uh, d the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife has in fact been held liable for water runoff in, in two other towns' cases. And so, again, using that as leverage to see what we can do to get uh, the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife to pay the bill. I just have one other thing. 
one these properties here that's got two shallow wells on it that's constantly running that are spring fed that those properties are still going to get water on it no matter what because it's on the high side of their properties so they're going to constantly get water out of those two wells that are there spring fed all year round I have one more thing to add and I'll end with this. Uh, I went and saw Herb at the town highway department when this first all came to head. And I said, this is a problem. And his remarks to me were exactly this. I was hoping I'd be retired before I had to deal with this issue. I'll leave it at that. Okay, Mr. Gillis, you've had your hand up for a while. Um, I think a great point was raised by one of the property owners, $33,000, um, does that fix this thing? Um, what do we have in the way of um, information about that? Is there any here who can address that? Um, are we throwing money away? And um, it, that would be my concern right, right here today. Mr. Snyder, did you want to say something? Yield to Mr. Taft. Go ahead. Well, one of you go. No, you. Let's go. <laughs> Move the question. Oh. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs> Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded to move the question. What it means is if we we're going to end debate on this, okay? So, if you want to keep talking about it, you're going to vote no. If you want to end debate, you're going to vote aye. All right. All those in favor of ending debate, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay. <laughs> debate is ended. So now we're going to the main question here, the $33,000 for um, Rice Corner Road drainage. Um, I don't have I don't have the copy of the motion right in front of me. Would you read it one more time and then we'll take a vote? Uh, so, to see if the town would vote to raise no, this, yeah, it was raised inappropriate um, to repair water runoff on Rice Corner Road. Period. That was it. Thirty. Yeah, it was thirty-three thousand. Thirty-three thousand dollars to repair. Water runoff on Lake Road, Rice Corner Road. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. 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 Uh, where's my counter? Okay. All those in favor, would you please stand? This is Passover, right? No, 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 The motion is defeated 28 to 13. All right, Article 11. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer or borrow some of money to raise two buildings in the town of Brookfield or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $9,000 to raise 34 South Maple Street and 33 River Street. Okay. Motion made and seconded $9,000 to raise two buildings. You want to make a comment on that before? Uh, <clears throat> the, the Board of Health has uh, been on an on a, a active act 
activity of tearing down buildings that uh, could no longer be rehabilitated. These are two or three properties that were reviewed for this fiscal year, and these properties are in a position where tearing them down is the proper thing to do. The third property, in fact, can be re rehabilitated, and that is the current plan. Okay, any comments or questions on this? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Okay, the motion passes. Article 12. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer, or borrow a sum of money to fund the fleet repair and replace account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Where am I? Sorry. Okay, 12. I move that the town vote to transfer $66,700 from stabilization to fund the fleet repair replacement account. And, and Mr. Moderator, may I speak to it? Yeah, just a second. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Mr. Moderator, yes. uh, I know there's some confused murmurs going around the room right now, and so I just wanted to clarify why the number that I'm currently proposing is significantly higher than what's, what was found in your recommendations um, on the annotated warrant tonight. So we, we have had a piece of equipment since the time of us originally developing the warrant um, experience a significant failure. Okay, and that is going to put us in a position where um, it would be advisable to go ahead and replace that piece of equipment now rather than when uh, it was uh, currently proposed by the Capital Improvement Committee as well as just in the overall plan, which would have been June of this year coming. Uh, so th what that accounts for is that we have a 36-year-old forestry truck that has had the anchors that are on the... Uh, body of it that hold the body to the frame uh, the break axle. loose. I'm sorry? The rear axle. I'm sorry, the rear axle. My, my mechanicing, I just, I just rolled a mechanicing fail. I, I, had, I had heard the description indirectly. I hadn't inspected it myself. Okay. Um, and that is the reason for the increase in the dollar value that you see in the warrant today. Okay, um, any questions? Mr. Gillis. Um, I, I would like you to uh, specify the numbers again. We, you know, we, we, the, the recommendation was for 20 and we went to 66. What, so the difference is for? It's $46,700 for a, a chassis. Okay. So the, through you, Mr. Moderator, the difference between those two numbers is $46,700, which is the cost of just the frame and chassis as estimated from the state contract values uh, for a one-ton truck uh, with a tow package as required to carry the type of weight that the, I think it's a 250-gallon water tank that goes on top of the forestry truck. So I would, Mr. Moderator, yes. I would like to turn over to, to the fire chief to give a little further explanation as to what we found, and further in, in the meantime, as he walks towards the microphone, that we look to Article 13, that the select board was looking to move to pass over Article 13, um, and again, deal with this later, and again, I would uh, yield to the chief for a further explanation of that as well. So as Beth pointed out, um, I was facing the wrong way. Forestry 2, two days ago, was parked outside after doing some minor details. Do you mind if I address them? You guys know this stuff. So no, I prefer, I prefer oh. that you oh, okay. keep doing it this way. I just feel rude. <laughs> they know it. I'm, so anyway, so I'll talk to you. So Forestry 2 was doing some fire prevention details the other day. It got parked outside. When it got put away, there was a puddle of brake fluid under it, and there was a piece of metal about this long underneath it. 
they're just falling off. Um, upon examination, by Mr. Chafee, four, four of those bolts are in place that hold the truck together, the top on, stuff on top to the axle. Of those four, three of them were broken. One was on the ground. Herb was able to yank one down by himself. So there's one holding it on there. That's just what we know. It also took out a brake line in the process when it fell apart. So we don't know what it would cost to repair it. It's only been two days. We're going to spend a lot of time getting estimates. The timing of this meeting was such that it seemed like a viable option to consider this, that this truck was slated to be replaced at the next annual town meeting. It's a truck we do need even in the winter. It's our most viable off-road or foul weather vehicle. So the question was, are we going to put a thousand, a couple thousand into it to, re to repair it? to get it through to next June? Or do we just advance the schedule a little bit? Our books are, as I pointed out to the t head table earlier, our books are in much better position than they were in the past. So trying to leapfrog and band-aid around things isn't, isn't a necessity anymore. So we we're gonna spend this money anyway. It's just a question of if we spend it tonight, we spend it in June. Um, I don't know, you mentioned talking about the next article a little bit. Um, I'll do that until he tells me that we've gone off the reservation a little bit. Um, the next article, I believe, was going to be made. The motion was going to be made, some discussion, and made to pass over. Um, so knowing that we're not supposed to do that anymore, we are still looking to replace the 1988 pumper. That's the bread and butter truck of the fire department, the pumper, the big red truck, you well, in this case, it's white. But usually the big red truck that goes to all of your calls. We still need to replace that truck. Right now, we've asked the federal government for 95% of the money. We'll be on the hook for 5% if it comes through. It'd be great. We'll know that by, they'll be announcing everything, yay or nay, by March 1st of next year. There was a concern by a couple of committees that if we approve that now, then it might be an act of, not an act of good faith, either to the townspeople or to the federal government that, well, we really need this money, but no, we really don't. Or in the other case, we really need this money or we really don't. So by March 1st, we'll know, and possibly by next town meeting, we'll either be looking at the same figure for used, if the books are continue to get better, which they seem to be every day, maybe I'll be here advocating for a new truck. Um, we'll see. But for the here and now, the utility truck, and it's not just the forestry truck, I hate the term forestry trucks, but it's a utility. When we have wires down, most towns, you have a limb on wires, the fire department goes out to say, yeah, it's a limb on wires, here's a pole number. We don't send out a half million dollar truck with six guys, six people to do it. We send out the little truck, it's a lot less risky. That's that truck. This truck goes, goes out during winter storms, back up the ambulance, things like that. So, and could we repair it? Possibly, probably, but that money would be simply just be for six months, tops. So, so thank you for your consideration. Right. I, ha I hate to uh, confuse things here, but I'm going to make a ruling that I'm already there. is going to set people back. If the motion that was made was made under Article 13, I would allow it because it says the to purchase a fire vehicle, and that's essentially what we're doing. Article 12, which is transferring money into the fleet repair and replacement account, doesn't, doesn't give adequate notice to anyone that they're going to um, purchase a, a truck there. Article 13 does, and I think that's, that's where it should go. So having said that, um, I'm not going to ex accept, if you want to transfer motion, you know, money into uh, the fleet and repair account, okay, but if you want to purchase a, a truck, then I really think that needs to be done under Article 13 when notice was given. So. so, Mr. Moderator, yep. I would then go back to Article 12, the original motion. I move that the town vote to transfer $20,000 from stabilization account to fund the fleet repair and replacement account. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that? Mr. Gillis? 
Okay, we're taking it out of stabilization. It, Mr. Gillis, are you? Are you good with that? Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm fine. So we're taking it out of stabilization, $20,000, so this needs a two-thirds two -thirds vote. vote. All those in favor of taking $20,000 from stabilization to the... Oh, no, we're transferring it from the fleet repair and replace account. Okay, I got it. $20,000. Right. Okay? The original, original motion. Yeah. I got it. Okay. All those in favor of the $20,000, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no? Okay. That's a vote. All right. Now, I would declare that a two-thirds vote. I heard, I heard one no, but was there more than that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, Article 13. Now you can... All right, Mr. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate a sum of $46,700 uh, $46, for the purchase of a utility fire vehicle. Okay. From stabilization. Transfer from stabilization. The I'll money is I'll coming from where? Okay. Stabilization. Stabilization. And Beth's going to write it up for Mike. Okay, motion made and seconded to transfer $46,000. Uh, 46700 46700 Yep, that's what the current estimate is. From stabilization to purchase a fire vehicle? A utility fire vehicle. Utility yes. fire vehicle. Yeah, but he, he, he corrected us. Have you got that written out for the town clerk? <coughs> We're having a slight pause here. No. Article will be, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $46,700 $46, from stabilization account to purchase and equip a fire utility vehicle. Okay, any discussion on this? If not, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. If I would declare that a two-thirds vote also. Mr. Moderator, motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> okay, motion made to dissolve the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Thank you for attending. <laughs> well done. It was interesting.